All right, so the Dem debates. The people who are out of their minds, the lunatics, are, 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 are insane. And then there are the ones who said things that maybe made a little bit of sense, but yet they have 0% chance of becoming president. So DJT's got this in the bag, if that's who's representing the Democrat Party. Really, I mean, the, the nobodies. Really, you're going to put your weight, you know, they're talking about the moderates. The moderates are nobodies, really. You're going to put your weight behind that Hickenlooper dotard? And who was that aging surfer bro from Montana with the sweaty face? Hey, we just have to focus on everyday lives. I'm a progressive, emphasis on progress, and I'm running for president to get stuff done for all those Americans Washington has left behind. Just running to get stuff done, brah. I'm a progressive, emphasis on progress. Really, emphasis on progress, as opposed to what? What else is in that word? Emphasis on the if? Idiot. Like, who are you? Who dragged you out of the pits of irrelevancy? This is, this is Montana's governor? I've never heard of him. And it's not just me, by the way. I mean, Montana's Googling him. They don't know who he is. He's the most Googled Democratic candidate in Montana. Uh, guys, he's your governor. You don't know who he is? Isn't he your governor? How do you have to Google him? Everywhere else in the country, it's Marion Williamson. But Montana had no idea who their own governor was, so they had to Google him to find out. Guys, he's your governor. Must be doing a bang-up job. So there was his irrelevant self, and then the others, seriously, who are these people? Tim Ryan? I mean, did you see Tim Ryan? I love this. He didn't put his hand over his heart for the national anthem. How about Tim Ryan? You show a little respect for your country, you nobody. But then again, to be honest, that national anthem was a disaster. That national anthem was so bad, I almost kneeled for it. And the rockets, red, red, bubbles bursting in the rain. Through the night, that our flag was still there. Ah, what notes are those? That's not the national anthem. That's not how the national anthem is supposed to sound. You're telling me that's supposed to be the Star Spangled Banner? I don't think so. I don't think so. No, that was a bunch of people shouting at the top of their lungs. The CNN anchors, you know, during the national anthem, they had to beg the candidates to please stand. Please don't kneel, candidates, for the national anthem. Future presidents, please, please, we're begging you. Can't have any presidential candidates kneeling because Everyone knows that would be a deal breaker for most Americans. And CNN is dying to have one of those clowns in the White House. Oh, candidates, please don't kneel. They're in the tanks for the Democrats. Had to give them this reminder. Please remain standing for our national anthem performed by Detroit's own Pastor Marvin Winans and the Perfecting Church Choir. How screwed are we when the moderators have to remind presidential candidates, please don't kneel, please don't pull a Kaepernick during our national anthem. So the mainstream media narrative out there is that it's Sanders and Warren versus the moderates. I'm sorry, the moderates? Beto O'Dork, who wants to tear down the existing wall to open up our borders, is not a moderate. Pete Buttigieg, who was raised a socialist and refuses to denounce socialism, is not a moderate. Pete Buttigieg, who supports the Green New Deal, is not a moderate. Pete Booty Judge had a gash on his face, you know, when you're shaving your forehead and cut yourself right in the face. What is that? I don't know, but it disappeared halfway through the debate. He was out there on the debate stage shaming Christians for not being Democrats. The minimum wage is just too low. And so-called conservative Christian senators right now in the Senate are blocking a bill to raise the minimum wage when scripture says that whoever oppresses the poor taunts their maker. Yeah, Pete Buttigieg citing scripture. I'm sure he lives his life according to the gospel. So-called Christians. Yeah, dude, you want to know what oppresses the poor? Minimum wage laws oppress the poor. It creates more of them. Minimum wage laws force businesses to get rid of people. Businesses who can't afford the new wages under the law that government is forcing them to pay people. Because of these laws, to guarantee people a so-called living wage, people end up 
with no wage because the businesses can't afford to keep them. And scripture says nothing about the government forcing business owners to pay people's wages who they cannot afford. Minimum wage laws cause businesses to shudder and ultimately oppresses more people because people lose their jobs. Don't cite scripture gash face. So-called conservative Christians, so annoying. And so annoying how he talks about how young he is. Did you forget that I'm, I'm basically a baby? You're 37 years old. Oh, I'm a millennial. You're 37. You're not actually a millennial. You're basically a boomer. Radicals on parade. That's what we witnessed at this debate. You got Elizabeth Warren promising to decriminalize illegal border crossings. We must be a country that every day lives our values, and that means you, we Senator cannot Warren. make it just a crime when someone Thank comes you, Senator. here. Just to clarify, would you decriminalize yes. illegal border crossings? Yes, yes, of course I would make it legal to come here illegally, thereby obliterating whatever semblance of a border we have now and making our sovereignty irrelevant. Yeah, of course. We can't make it criminal to criminally enter the country. I mean, why even have a border? She doesn't want one, she's a radical. And then she completely dodged the question over whether she would raise taxes on the middle class to fund Medicare for all. Dodge it, well, of course you would have to raise taxes. How else are you gonna pay for it? That's the question none of these people wanna answer. And then she got all upset. She got all upset because she got cut off in the middle of her lame anecdote. I, you know, I can't stand when they do that, it's so phony and so disingenuous. I went down to Ohio and I met John and Abigail Lumper and neither of them have any fingernails, but they want me to be president. Like, shut up, shut up. These are not real people. You made these people up. And throughout the debate, you know, the, the so-called moderates, they would try to chime in and say, hey, what about the American worker? Crazy people, what about the taxpayer whom you're trying to squeeze? What about the people who want jobs and not just free stuff? And then the crazies would say, boo, I don't even know why you're running. And then they'd get thunderous applause. We need to encourage collaboration between the government, the private sector, and the nonprofit sector, and focus on those kitchen table pocketbook issues that matter to hardworking Americans, building infrastructure, creating jobs, improving their pay, Thank you, creating universal health care, lowering drug prices. Senator we can Warren. do it. You know, I don't understand why anybody goes to all the trouble of running for president of the United States just to talk about what we really can't do and shouldn't fight for. <laughs> Pocahontas! And then you had lunatic Bernie Sanders just yelling on stage like a maniac. And then one of the irrelevants called him out on it. They could bail out the crooks on Wall Street, so please don't tell me that we cannot take on the fossil fuel industry. You don't have to yell. Why is he yelling? Bad vibes, dude. But Marianne was on stage, so she brought a, she brought a calming presence to the whole affair. You know, Marianne, she's not about details. She doesn't really like details. She's about vibes. Anytime someone brings up specific policies, Marianne gets very upset, says, no, 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 no. I don't want to talk about specifics. I want to get up on stage and let you feel my crystal vibes. If you think any of this wonkiness is going to deal with this dark psychic force of the collectivized hatred that this president is bringing up in this country, then I'm afraid that the Democrats are going to see some very dark days. What accent are you talking in, woman? What the hell? At, where are you from? Where did you come from? Who taught you what you know? Very bizarre. But they all know they're in a lot of trouble. They acknowledge that on stage. They acknowledge that Donald Trump is going to be very hard to beat. Because they know, none of, they know none of them can win. They're all wasting everyone's time. I mean, I can't believe that these ideas are being strewn around on a mainstream platform like a debate stage for the president of the United States. But the good thing is that the Democrats, in order to win, they have to take back the places they lost to Donald Trump, places like Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. And there is no way in absolute hell that they will accomplish that by saying what you saw on that stage.